Can you hear me? Test, test, test. Hey, Seisu, the VOD's going to disappear soon. So, um, uh, let's direct them towards the YouTube VOD if we can from here on out because it'll be up permanently. Thank you. Um, gotta love that. So, <laughs> good evening, Yodare. Welcome, one and all. I am Mac, the community manager of Dungeon Alchemist. Sorry, I'm just uh, noticing my screen was a little bit off there. One moment, I'm just pulling up a document I needed for today's stream <clears throat> that I forgot to open. Um, how's everyone doing today while you're waiting on me? And the other document I need. Sorry for the delay, everyone. I thought I had this open, but I guess I closed it on accident. First and foremost, um, welcome back for everyone that's been here before, and uh, welcome all the new faces that have never been here before. If you are unsure of what you're looking at, this is Dungeon Alchemist. Dungeon Alchemist is an AI-powered map-making utility available on Steam. It allows you to generate entire environmental maps or you know, small battle maps or whatnot in, in just seconds, as well as you can roll up your sleeves and uh, build the maps of your dreams. Today, we are uh, going over some more content that is going to be revealed in our next update, Fata Morgana. <clears throat> that is uh, the name of the update. Uh, it is a desert-themed update due for launch sometime before the end of the month. And honestly, I wish I had a finer date than that, but I don't at this time. Um, one moment. Um, <clears throat> anyway, tomorrow would be good. <laughs> You're funny. <clears throat> nice, you've been using it since the original Kickstarter and this is your first stream. Well, welcome, first off. Thank you for being here. So, <clears throat> we've got a lot to go over today, um, and I've got a very big surprise for you today that is something incredibly cool, and it's, it's actually quite cool. Oh man, I just got word of another announcement I can give. Oh my gosh, I've got two really cool announcements to give this stream. Um, can I ask you all how my camera looks though? Like, does it look okay? I got a new camera this week and I'm just playing around with the settings of it. Does it look good? <clears throat> I'm a bit washed out. Let's see if I can... Hmm. Camera can't help my face. That's the problem. It only can do so much. Realistically. <laughs> yeah, let me... I just got to play around with it a little bit. I think... I 
Eh, I'll play with it later. Yeah, I know. Exactly, right? Letter Smith, exactly. Yeah, I was just looking at it to make sure it was actually coming through good because this is the first time I've used it and I wanted to make sure it was all right. So we've got a, quite a bit of content to come. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right, Carol? Exactly. Exactly. Sorry, when I start a stream, I just like to make sure everything's working. Camera, voice, screen, everything's good. You know what, uh, Orcus Rex, that's a good question. And uh, I will likely cover that later in the stream. Uh, hi, Site for Psoriasis. Anyway, welcome one and all. Again, I am Mac, the community manager. Sorry to get sidetracked there. This new camera, I was just making sure it was working and I apologize for that. We're gonna get back on track here. For right, right now, I want you to know that you are already looking at Fata Morgana content. This is a sand dune oasis. Um, I'm going to go through the biomes for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to do a big announcement, okay? So we're going to start with kind of some basic stuff. I told everyone last week that we'd repeat some things. So if you saw the stream last week, some of this might be repeat for you. But also keep in mind, I didn't go through all the varied biomes and whatnot. So some of it might be new to you. <clears throat> um, please keep in mind that this is a beta build of Dungeon Alchemist. So... If for some reason something's wonky, it crashes, there's missing textures, it's slow to load, keep in mind it, it is, it's a beta build. It's not going to be the final launch. We've been actively bug busting all week. You know, honestly, that's a good question. So I used to, <laughs> Shady, I used to be a, a mixer partner before they died and uh yesterday and the last couple days mixer was trending on twitter and i was just feeling nostalgia this morning and i hadn't shaved my head and so i look extra bald for some reason when you're bald it's really a weird phenomenon you actually look more bald the more hair you have on your head as it grows than you do when you shave it all let me let me show you so when you have a little bit on the sides, you just look extra old and bald. But then when it's all gone, if you don't see anything, you look way less bald. Anyway, I just grabbed this hat because it's one of the few snapbacks I had. I put it on and covered my, my shame. Anyway, um, getting back into it as we were talking about Mixer instead. Hey, welcome, Will. Well, you made it just in time, my friend. So let's go through a couple biomes. So to generate a, a new biome, you can either do it through file, new map, uh, which by the way, there's a hotkey to get to that now. If you hit escape, it actually brings up this quick reference you know, menu like most other pieces of software do in games. You can quickly hit exit, settings, or resume. So, or, you know, so in this case, just file, new map, control N also. Um, or you could go to terrain and hit the change terrain type. So right now we're in desert. I'm going to just shift through a few desert biomes. Actually, let's do new map to make it bigger. So let's start with, uh, let's do a Grand Canyon. We'll do Plateau, and we'll do Cacti Soguaro. Oh, Bear, I'm glad you enjoyed it. You know, honestly, I, 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 there's a few comments on there, but I never know if the vast majority of the people that watch it enjoy it. So I appreciate hearing that. So, you have this beautiful terrain generation at your fingertips. Notice the rivers it generates are no longer just the simple zigzags and S's. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Honestly, we put the tutorials on uh, the breaks on the tutorials until FADA launched because I was doing a lot of other content, filming different stuff. But um, after FADA launches, we'll be getting back to at least one to tutorials a month, hopefully. Um, also, I, I'm getting a new monitor soon, and that should improve my workflow. You know, that is, uh, that is a great idea, Rachel. You know, sometimes when I'm generating presets, what I like to do, it, you can look at it and see what it's currently at right here, right? So if you hit the terrain 
tool and then go to change terrain type. This is what I generated it as, desert, Grand Canyon, cacti, saguaro, o oasis. Now, of course, I don't know the size, but if I wanted to know the size, I could go to export. And when you export, it shows the grid size for what it's exporting at, depending on what you set it to. So this was actually a 40 by 40, but it exports as a 42 by 42 to get as much of the edge as possible. Okay, so here we have, you know, an oasis type. Let's do a lake. You know, that's a good idea, Fallen Sniper. He says, could it be possible to assign a seed ID to map generation to repeat the same sequence later? You know, that's a wonderful idea. Unfortunately, I have no say in that, and I can't guarantee whether that would be a possibility. I think we don't actually have any devs in the chat today. Um, so they can't answer either, but Upvotee is being shared is a great place to suggest that. Please put it as a suggestion. The devs will likely see it there. Let's see here. Question. Sometimes I feel like I have the feeling my DM creates a session matching things he learns from your tutorials. Probably, Raven. Probably. Honestly, you know. I'm glad that people are using them. So Bear, in, uh, in you asked, today I noticed that I can't use every terrain brush in every biome. For example, can't use jungle brushes on wood biome. Will this be changed? So Vim actually addressed this yesterday in our Discord because someone brought it up. And uh, what he stated is the brush type, the tools they use, it actually is a big burden on the system when there's more and more and more brush types. So they limit the amount per biome to keep them specific and tight and clean so that it keeps the system running clean, the app running as smooth as possible. However, they are in the process of developing a new brush that will be much more vast and give us a lot more control and have almost every brush in every biome. So... Keeping that in mind going forward, that will likely change. I don't know if it'll be the next update or way in the future, but yeah. Uh, I'm glad you like the tutorials. Honestly, I like to just show that it's possible to build things in Dungeon Alchemist that aren't necessarily AI generated. And that's kind of the point of give a damn is to say, hey, you can build a cave. You can build a sewer. You just got to put a little bit of extra effort. But honestly, my tutorials make it quick. So another thing that my tutorials help with a lot, uh, well, you know, I had those templates, right, for the cave templates that raise the terrain. So I raised the terrain up so you had a terrain, uh, like kind of like a, a template that you could carve into and sculpt caves into right away. Well, guess what? In the next update, the terrain brush is getting a huge overhaul in that you can now improve brush strength. And I want to just show you how quick it is by raising the terrain on this map. So let's take a good look at the lake in the canyon here. This looks very good, but I want to show you how powerful it is. So this used to take, you know, a long time, but now I'm doing it in seconds, raising it all the way to the max. So I could probably do this whole map in under two minutes. Yeah, of course. One moment, I'll show you the minimum size of the tool in a second, but I'm just showing how fast... So this is, you know, for anyone who's raised the terrain to the ceiling, you know how long it takes. And look at me doing it from the water. It's incredibly fast. Um, let's see here. So the minimum size goes down to this big. One thing I've noticed is it expands from the center of the circle first. So if you take that into account, like if you put it on one edge of something, it'll do it slower on one side. Yeah, once you get it to flattened at the set height, it is much faster. I agree. Once you get it up to the flattened height and then you just switch, or once you get it to the height you want and then hit flattened terrain, if the brush is over, like if over 51% of the brush is on a set terrain, it will flatten the rest to that around it. So keep that in mind. If you're overhanging, it'll start flattening to the lower area. If you're on the flat area, it'll flatten to that area. But it is much faster now than ever before. This, will, this is a game changer. Big game changer. Um, next.
Okay, I think it's time for a big reveal. Who wants to hear the big reveal? <clears throat> Raise of hands. Hands up. You know what? We actually should do a giveaway, and then we'll do the reveal. I'm going to get the giveaway started. We're going to give away a copy of Dungeon Alchemist. We've had at least 100 people in here. One moment. So, if you already own a copy of Dungeon Alchemist, give it to a friend, a family member, save it to give it as a gift later, later or give it away on your, your own streams, etc. Uh, your own content channels, whatever. Okay. Instructions will be in chat momentarily. Yes, you have to hold your hand up the whole giveaway, VT Tom, VTT Tom, you in particular. Remember, you must be a follower to enter this giveaway. So if you're not following, hit that follow button right away so you can enter. This is a free copy of Dungeon Alchemist we're giving away, the, the app you're seeing right here in stream. So if you don't own a copy, that's awesome. And if you do, even better. So while we are going through and uh, people are entering the giveaway, showing how much they give a damn, I would like to announce... I'm gonna load this other map really quick. Let's see here. So, uh, this is a big deal. For a long time now, many, 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 many people in the community have asked for something that I'm gonna bring up. Tokens. Who has wanted tokens in Dungeon Alchemist? And this map takes forever to load. <sighs> okay, but not only... Okay, this is a two-tiered announcement. Well, three-tiered announcement, actually. Okay? Not only are you getting tokens, but Dungeon Alchemist is now compatible with the Hero 4 JPI. Okay, so what that means what that means is if you have created Hero Forge tokens and purchased them as a digital 3D digital token, or if you've gotten any of the content packs as there as a monthly subscriber, you can import those to your to, uh, to Dungeon Alchemist and use them um, as uh, tokens on Dungeon Alchemist. And let me show you what that, what that looks like. Just one second. Now that I've made this announcement, I just want to make sure it's posted everywhere or is going to post everywhere. Including places it can't post automatically. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... Tokens are coming to Dungeon Alchemist. You get a bunch of tokens included, including, you know, a basic set of, you know, classes, Barbarian, Bard, Druid, etc. When you link your Hero Forge account, you actually get a, a bunch of free tokens. One moment, I created an image for that just in case. Where the heck did I put it? Oh my gosh. So if you even don't even have a single Hero Forge token that you've paid for, as long as you link your Hero Forge account to Dungeon Alchemist, then you actually get five free tokens. I had an image for this. One second, let me find it. I thought I put it in here, and I'm so mad at myself. Hmm. So mad at myself. I swear I did. Huh. Huh. 
Okay. Well, this is what I'll do. I'll unlink it to show you really quickly because I can't figure it out. So basically, you get these five free tokens right here for free when you um, link your account. And these are courtesy of Hero Forge. Uh, basically, all you got to do is link your account. You don't have to have bought anything. You don't need a subscription. You get them for free. Um, let's see here. Did the Hero Forge tutorial pop up ever in chat? Because I made a command for that as well. There we go. That's the instructions on how to use Hero Forge. Okay. Yeah, but it has a limit on how often it'll say it. Anyway, one moment here. I'm going to relink my Hero Forge account so we can look at all that. But I can't do that while you guys watch, so I'm going to just step away into this BR Burr screen. Okay, so when you link it, it pops up this prompt, and there'll be five extra tokens on top of the... There's a handful of tokens that you're getting for free. So you get a, um, a handful. This will work with the update by the end of the month. Here's another tiered update. We're hoping to launch on the 29th. Hoping means most likely on the 29th. That being said, if there's anything that happens, you know, something happens that slows us down, like we find a big bug, it may be delayed a little bit, but 29th is the window we're shooting for right now. So now you know, 29th, you know you're getting tokens, you know you're getting Hero Forge, but wait, there's more. So I've actually linked my account and I have a bunch of Hero Forge tokens that you can see here. I've actually imported my own token right there. That's mine, my changeling, and that's my my uh, my wife's harangan. Isn't that pretty cool? Here, let's go to another map. But this map I call the Radiant Bazaar. It's a great showcase of all the various colors. You can now switch colors on all a lot of objects. You get a big color hue shifter. You just click on the object, and then you can tell if it has it. And it gives you a lot of different variety in your environments. But as you can see here, I've placed dozens of tokens, and it adds a lot of life here. This guy is a little fruit vendor. Okay. One of my favorites, bolt of cloth. You can change the color. So now we have more than just three bolts of cloth. Another one, I made sure the devs added this before this patch, and they weren't going to. I don't, I don't know if they were planning on it, but jewels can now shift color. So now you have a lot more dif different jewel types. Um, it might be a setting. Here, I'll turn it down here. Test, test. I, honestly, I'm like... One second. Let's see. Is that any better? Is that any better? Sorry about that. I'm also really excited about this update, so I'm a little bit uh, hyped. So many different objects have the ability to change their color. Look at this crystal ball. Look at this box. Oh, not that box. Look at this box. Look at this bag. Hundreds of objects, old and new, have the ability to change their um, the ability to change their hue. Let's load a new map so I can show you one last feature tied to tokens. Okay. That's a good question. I have had no one to test it with so far. I haven't even tested it with the devs yet. So I have no idea. It's very possible they'll transfer over. I have no idea, though. <laughs> I mean, right now, damn files transfer 
stuff from Kickstarter content, so. Sips tea. Take that as you will. So here we have a desert caravan. And they're not aware they're about to be ambushed. So, as you notice, when you click on the token, you actually can move them around using your your arrow keys or with a control or, you know, with your mouse. And they actually will snap to the grid. So let's turn the grid on really quick so you can kind of see. And if you use the arrow keys, same. You can also grab and rotate them by hand if you choose. Zach, you won, my man. Congratulations. Wow. Um, honestly, I was able to, like, get inside of the caravans earlier and stuff, so they can move around pretty freely. They do get hung up on some objects. Oh my gosh, Mendari, thank you for the raid. Much appreciated. Welcome, welcome, one and all. You know, we gotta love a raid. I think this is one of the few times we've been raided so far. I actually know how to get a hold of, uh to get a hold of sack so I, i'll message him privately later let's welcome the raid first off hello is it mandari mandari welcome thank you for the raid so there's other people streaming on twitch right now and when they raid you that means they ended their stream and them and all their viewers came over and plopped into your stream it's like if someone ended a concert and then they took everyone at their concert and walked across the street to another venue and then w started watching that concert. It is going very well. We're actually showcasing our next update for Dungeon Alchemist. Uh, welcome one and all to the stream. If you're not sure what you're looking at, this is Dungeon Alchemist and I am the community ma and manager for Dungeon Alchemist. My name is Mac. Dungeon Alchemist is an AI-powered map-making utility available on Steam. It allows you to build battle maps and environmental maps as well as, you know, hand-build maps. But you can build maps in seconds or you can spend hours handcrafting them by and, and putting in all the details you want. Thank you, Seisu, for that. So for those of you wondering what you're looking at, that's what you're looking at. Honestly, Giro's, I haven't checked in on that. I don't know. So I'll have to look into it and probably answer later on the Discord. I'm assuming they'll probably just image export. So I'm not 100% certain how that factors in. I honestly, the reason this is a thing, let me show you a couple things and we'll show you how this works as a whole. So a lot of people say they want to use Dungeon Alchemist as a VTT. And Basically, we've seen many different people in our community use Dungeon Alchemist on a flat TV or on Discord and they project, you know, their screen and let their players see that. Well, I've actually worked with the devs and <laughs> we're, we have a new mode called Hide UI Mode. So now you can hide the UI and be in a top-down mode, still have the grid if you want, and use... Dungeon Alchemist is a limited VTT. So you could essentially broadcast this to like Discord or on a flat panel or whatever. And you could still click on the tokens and move them around. But now the UI is hidden. Um, it's a big deal. And another great thing for this is you can now use this for screenshots. So creators like myself, like the community manager who takes a buttload of screenshots and video, you can now screenshot and record from a third party program. So you could just, you know, quickly print screen and export that to your photo editor of choice, or you can record using a third party program like slobs, OBS, etc., and then use that. Now, obviously we have cinematic mode. Oh, by the way, to leave the hit hide UI mode, you press escape and you leave the first time you use hide UI mode, there's a, 
a little tool prompt, a tool tip prompt that comes up and it'll come up every time until you click a check mark box. And it'll come up every time as a reminder. So you can now use Dungeon Alchemist as a limited VTT. So that's part of the reason. Now, another thing with tokens, I know you're asking about how it exports. We'll look into that in a moment. I don't know 100% and I may need to do that off stream to see. So last but not least, and people have asking, what's the eye icon? You can click the eye icon, boom, and go into first person mode. You can hobble around in first person mode. You can jump. You can investigate the environment, look at other tokens. Basically, this is a great way for your players to look around from their point of view. Look at my my private wine label, Max Homebrew. <laughs> you like that? Here's some strawberries, snozberries actually. So last week we showcased cinematic mode but this is actually first person mode it's slightly different you actually control the token and notice the movement has a slight kind of hobble to it you also can jump and you can interact with the environment things like lamps etc you can turn them on and off by left clicking on them and you can actually kind of get into things too so here i am inside of this now let's say i leave this mode by hitting escape yep so there's the token. It's inside exactly where I left from. Not to be confused with cinematic mode, which is completely different. It's a free range camera that you can also record. Notice where it says F and R at the top. In either mode, if you hit F, it'll take a screenshot. And then you can... Hold on one second. Then you can save whatever. You can type it as something. So test and then save it. Or if you want to record, this is in cinematic mode. You can just move around and record. Or you can just hold still and do a loop where there's like, you know, you know, the animated stuff in the map. Or you could be in a top down of an animated scene and record it and loop it. You could do all sorts of stuff with this. Hit R again. It'll save it. Anyway. Yep, exactly. I showed you that just two minutes ago, Will, actually. So there's two. There's three ways to record. Cinematic mode. FPS mode and then hide ui mode so let's uh up at the top here where it says view if you click view you can hide the user interface now and let's say you use slobs or obs or xsplit you can then record in this unfortunately it's not a free motion camera still is limited range but at least you can record at a much higher fps bit rate etc well here's the thing so in cinematic mode it renders the map twice. It renders the existing map and then it renders the camera mode. So you're running it twice. And then on top of that, I'm running a stream software at 1910 by 10, 1920 by 1080. So I'm essentially rendering it three times. So it was bound to lag and have some issues, but it records at 1920 by 1080 uh, at about 10 K bit rate. And it is 30 FPS. Okay. So you can record in fps mode you can take screenshots in fps mode you can do screenshots in cinematic mode and in and record in cinematic mode and then lastly you can use external programs when you're using the hide ui you could use an external program like you could just press print screen to screenshot it or you can do wind shift s which oh wind shift s wait there we go. And that allows you to kind of like drag and do a screenshot. And then it that's exact, that's saved in your, uh, in your, um, sorry, when you, it's saved as like uh, on your copy paste, it's on your clipboard. You can paste it into Photoshop or paint. Sorry. Anyway, next let's leave hide UI mode. So there's several ways for creators and GMs to utilize this. You can hide UI to use Dungeon Alchemist as a VTT. You can hide UI to take screenshots and recordings with a third party application. You can go into first person mode on any token, wander the map, see what it is bird's eye view from their view, or you can take screenshots and pictures. You can also use cinematic mode in the top right. So there's three ways for you to do screenshots and pictures now. 
You need ceilings and roofs, you say. Here, let's generate a new map. So what I'm going to do, now we're going to get into room types. So the new room types are under desert. And as of right now, I don't know if there'll be any more added before launch, but right now you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight room types. Laboratory's pretty cool. Let's check out laboratory. So, Rakam, you cannot export animated maps yet, but you can screen record a section for a theater of the mind handout or a looped, you know, animated screen setting that you do before you move into an area or when you move in it triggers and shows that for the first time kind of like a loading screen there's lots of ways around it okay uh ryan ja, all maps created before the update will work just fine so yes so it has backwards compatibility you should be able to use first person hide ui and cinematic mode I'm trying to catch up with chat you guys are asking a lot of questions so give me a moment there is no fog of war yet, and it's not a stretch goal, but it is on our upvoting, and the devs are considering it. Okay? So, one of my favorite new objects in this update are these, these guys. Oh, by the way, quality of life feature right now. You guys are going to, this is going to flip. Oh my gosh, you're going to flip over this. It's going to, you're going to shit bricks when you see this. This has been asked for a lot. Everyone's like, what is this object? I have no idea what it is. Guess what? We've added tool tips. So when you highlight the copy button, it says the name of the object. Now notice it says coil there below. Any object in Dungeon Alchemist, you now know the name of the object when you if you click on it and click on the tool tip for it. There's so many quality of life features in this update. It took me like a week and a half to find them. I looked at my Steam. I've done 120 hours of Dungeon Alchemist in the last week. It is nuts how much I have done. Hey, who's ready for another giveaway? What do you think? Should we do another one? One moment, sorry. Uh, okay. So these guys here, if you separate them far enough, they stop making the current. If they're close enough, they do it. I wish there was a play button on these so you could disable it. I wonder if it's too late to do that. Sack can't enter, okay? Let's see here. Okay. Welcome, welcome. For those of you that are just getting in, we're going to start a giveaway for this program. It's called Dungeon Alchemist. It's available on Steam. My name is Mac. I am the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist. Let me start that giveaway. We've got 10 minutes to enter. You must be following to enter the giveaway. And you type exclamation damn or just damn in chat to enter. Okay, I've actually been authorized to do a few more giveaways today by the big boss, so that just uh, just so you know, we'll be doing a couple more throughout the stream. Okay, so stay tuned. Welcome, Dirty Rollers. How you doing, man? I didn't see you. Snoo Snoo, how you doing? Welcome back, all the repeat viewers who come in every week. I really appreciate you, and those of you that are new here for the first time as a Dungeon Alchemist fan, or new here as uh, you know, you have no idea what you're looking at. Just so you know, I appreciate you being here as well, whether you're chatting or lurking. It's amazing that you're here. 
So Dungeon Alchemist is an AI-powered map maker. It allows you to create maps for your TTRPG campaigns that you can either print or export for your VTT of choice in moments. It takes seconds to generate an environmental map, add a few uh, buildings to it, and then export it. Or you can roll up your sleeves and build the maps of your dreams. Either or, it's up to you. So someone was asking about the view or the ceiling, right, earlier? Let's see here. So when you click on the draw room tool, this is a, there's been a lot of quality of life improvements to the draw room tool. First off, when you click on the edit room panel, you can delete all the objects in a room. Let's just do that really quickly. So you can just, boom, rapidly delete all the objects. You could just delete the room. You can refresh the room, reshape the room. But right here, there's this UI feature that's relevant to cinematic and FPS mode. Show ceiling in this room. So you can leave it off and that shows the sky box or you can leave it on and that blacks out the ceiling. So there's nothing above it. So keep in mind, that's not a perfect solution. It's the first iteration of this. But when your players are in there in a, or if you're showing it in cinematic mode for recordings or FPS mode, it will block it out. Okay, excuse me. Whew, sorry, had a whatever there. So let's drop a token in here. I'm gonna use my token. This is me, my boy, Mac, my changeling artificer. Do we have any artificer maps in here? Okay, so let's click first person. Notice the sky is now black. You could still see the, the, the in, like, you know, objects outside, but now there's no like sun or moon or anything. I can go back into that same setting, click on the room, show the sky we'll click on my token and now you see the sun instead so you can actually hide the sky we don't have second stories at this time as a as a direct ai generation method usually once you set a build height you're build, you build on that height permanently however you can creatively build at multiple heights or multiple story buildings using our structural objects not the ai drawn rooms but structural objects let me show you what I mean. So under, okay, I'm going to just lower the terrain to give you an idea. Okay, so under objects, structural, oh, by the way, while we're here, many people were like, hey, where's all our round rooms? Do you guys have round rooms? How do I do round rooms? What's a round, you can't do round rooms in Dungeon Alchemist. I hate it. No, you can. You can. So I have begged Vim to add a round construction tab under objects, under structural. So now all round objects will be added in here as well going forward. You got to put a space between it. Say, Sue, please put a space. I think that's why. I got to add the non-spaced variant. Weird. Hmm. Let me look at it. It could be some dumb setting on the bot. Yep, okay, I fixed it. Okay, it should work, go forward now. Let's test. There we go. Yay. Okay. Sorry, I, I lost the stream. Oh no, oh there it is, okay. So, all of the round objects are now in this room. These, for instance, you could build a round room at a lower level or a higher level. You just got to put it in by hand. Hold shift while you place it, then rotate with the mouse wheel. Quickly whip up a, a round room. Let's disable collisions there really quick so I can just pop that in. And then I will move this cactus. Guess what? You want a round floor? There's a bunch that actually fit in there. Or you could draw it in by hand using the paint terrains. So this one is actually on a higher level right now, but or on a same level, but let's say we raise the terrain underneath it. We can raise that up. We could also multi-story this exact room if we really wanted to. So set this platform here, and then there's these pillars. You can actually 
stack objects on top of them. Hmm. There it is. Almost. Anyway, you get the gist. You can put objects on top of objects and make, say, a tower if you wanted. And there I made two stories of a tower in just like a minute. It's not impossible to do multiple, you know, tiered buildings. Or let's say you wanted to do multiple floors on one home. You could generate one floor, do the bottom floor, then generate the second floor, and or uh, do file save as, and then generate the second floor, save it as a floor two, and then generate the third floor three. And then you just set those as new scenes in your VTT as you go into them. You can be creative and do it. In the future, we hope to add multi-floor you know, options and compatibility, but it's something we don't have at the moment. So, um, Venibus, you can actually export directly for Roll20. Boundary, Fantasy Grounds, and a number of other VTTs. You can also set it for printing. You have lots of options. Okay. Let me look at my list of things I was supposed to go over today. Did the giveaway finally finish? Let's look at it. We got 2 minutes 45 seconds. Remember to enter the giveaway. You must be following the stream. Okay. Make sure you hit that follow button and type exclamation damn to enter. It's for a copy of Dungeon Alchemist. Let's look at a uh, another type of biome really quick. We're going to generate a new one. We're going to generate a Badlands, which is the other type of biome. Let's just do the same thing. Badlands, Canyon, Oasis. So it's the exact same kind of map, uh, you know, size map, but with a different biome. Let's uh, go ahead and remove the grid so it's not as hard to see. Uh, C word, would you post that in our Discord? Get rid of the C word. Oh my gosh, your name makes me laugh. That's a straight up Arrested Development uh, reference, I feel like. Anyway, uh, in our Discord, we have a tips and tricks section. Please, please, please share it there, okay? That would be the best one, okay? Um, can we make water opa opaque, murky? Not at this time that I'm aware of. However, there are a few terrain brushes that are, like, darker. And if you put them under there, that, that immediately, like, there's a green one. That gives the water a different hue right away, you know? So you could kind of make it swampy inside or darker at the bottom. So if you paint it differently, there's also other ways around that, too, by putting, say, lights in it. Um, so you could put like a, uh, a very powerful light source in there and hide it under like a rock, dye that light source green, turn it up way high and then put it inside something like that. So it makes it extra kind of murky, but then it's hidden. As long as collisions are off, it allows you to stash it inside something else. Yep. So if, uh, professor up. Upsideism asks, is there a way to look at a map from a flat, dead-on perspective? Yes. So in the top right corner here, you have a few options for perspective. You have zoom. You can rotate with your mouse wheel, or you can go into cinematic mode to have a free camera, which you can go top down, any view, take screenshots, record, whatever. You have free range motion of the camera, or you can click this in the top right corner of this icon. You can go to top down. You can go into like a 3D perspectives. You have lots of options. Vim, are you in here? Oh, nice, Vim. See, I didn't even know about that. There's stuff that I haven't even seen about the update yet. Uh, Prawn2000, you win. Congratulations. Prawn, can you say something in chat really quick to just confirm that you're still here? Yes, intermittently. Don't lie to me, boy. That ain't right. Holy shucks. I didn't know anyone said that anymore, and that's just the best. Okay, I'm getting your key really quick, and Sack's key. One second. Hmm. 
Where did chat go? I keep losing it. Okay, Prawn, I am going to whisper you a Dungeon Alchemist Steam key. And then I would like for you to verify in chat that you got it. And Sack, I am issuing yours to you right now as well. Let's see here. And Vim sent me a couple more keys. I just want to make sure I have those handy. Goes into my key chart. Okay, what is going on with these? No! You know what? I'll add them later. I've got them here. I'm not going to lose them. Okay, we're good. Hey, congratulations again to the winners. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for participating. We're going to do a couple more giveaways before the stream ends. Uh, yes. Yes. End of, we're aiming for end of September, most likely the 29th, unless something, you know, happens and we need to delay a little bit because we find something that needs some fixing or tweaking. But the 29th is the date we're shooting for right now. Okay. So, well, isn't that grand for you? Will you confirm in chat, Sack, that you got your chat, that you got yours? Oh, you got it. Okay, I see it up there. Never mind. Okay. So we'll do another giveaway in a couple minutes. Uh, well, not in a couple minutes. Like, uh-oh. There we go. I thought it was frozen. Maybe about 10, 20 minutes. Okay. So let's, uh, let's generate another building type while we're here because that's what we were talking about before we got all distracted. So let's generate a laboratory really quickly. Oh, I got shocked out of existence there. I love these coils. I do wish there was a play button on them, though, Vim, so we could disable it. If one of them has the play button off, then it disables the whole chain. Um, let's see here. Whole bunch of new lamps, lanterns, as you could see, these ornate lantern types. We got a bunch of new objects. Let's get in close here. Look at this guy. Very beautiful lanterns. The coils are also very cool. Dude, Vim, you and Carl and the other artists are so incredibly talented. Honestly, it's very intimidating working with you guys because I, I feel so stupid when it comes to this stuff because I like when I'm trying to explain bugs to you guys or like suggestions, I feel like I'm explaining like how a toddler says to grownups, you know, and so you guys are very smart. You're very, you know, very, very talented. You're very, very good at what you do. You listen to your community, you're responsive and quick. I, I, it's a pleasure working for you guys. And honestly, it's a pleasure being a part of this community. I feel like we're the best community in the world, honestly. We really are. Um, you cannot measure the distance between them, but you can show the grid on there. So let me show you. Oh, by the way, while we're here, let's show the square grid. And uh, we'll reveal one more other thing for those who haven't seen it yet. Let's set it green so it really pops. Let's put a token on here. There's my wife's token. There's my token. So as you can see, yep, we, we had announced tokens earlier in the stream, but uh, for those of you who weren't here earlier, you can now use tokens in Dungeon Alchemist, and we now support the Hero Forge API. That means you can import all of your purchased digital minis, uh, meaning any uh, digital minis you've uh, you know downloaded as a 3D digital or any of the packs you've gotten as a subscriber, you can import them. Here's a bunch of mine that I've gotten. I've made a few that I bought as well as uh, I've uh, imported a bunch of packs. And then 
It includes a bunch of free ones, both uh, like, you know, some NPCs, some monsters, some basic characters. And when you activate your Hero Forge account, whether you've bought any characters or not, you get five free minis. Okay. Not only that, uh, in addition to pair to that, you can go into view mode and hide the UI. So if you want to use uh, Dungeon Alchemist as a VTT, or if you display it through like a Vorpal board or a, a TV that's flat or a projector, or you want to use it as your VTT and you project it over Discord or whatever screen share, you can now hide the UI. Now this is a two purpose thing. For me, I actually like it because it's great for screenshots without the UI and also recording without the UI. So I use third-party software for my screenshots and recording, and it's a great way to get really good lossless recording without the UI present. Okay. Um, next. Okay. With that in mind, oh, by the way, when you're in UI mode, the first time you join it, a little tool tip will pop up telling you how to exit using the escape button and it has a checkbox that you have to click to hide that message in the future if not it'll pop up every time reminding you but otherwise it's pretty straightforward you hit escape to leave okay so another thing with grid that uh you know some of you saw the other day we are adding hex grids so you can now use hex grids and the hex grids are customizable in that you can set the size so there's a two meter, three meter, you get the gist. So, not only is there updates to the grid UI and its location is now separate from controls, it's got its own location, which makes it easier to manage and find, but also you can now do... <laughs> That's a good question, Vim, what about isometric? What software do I use to record Letter Smith? I use Streamlabs OBS to record, and then I just use uh, uh, Windows Screen Capture to do screenshots. So, you know, I'll get my, uh, typically any of the screenshots you see of maps, or unless I just export it directly from Dungeon Alchemist, but it's like you see an angled screenshot, typically I will do Win Shift S like the hotkey, and then I'll do a screen grab. But the best part of this hide UI mode I can do that same thing now and hide the UI and get very good, you know, 1920 by 1080 screenshots without the UI now. Very good. Because we support 3D, I guess, because it would look cool. <laughs> I guess that would be the main reason, right? Why not? Is there a hot key for grid on off? Um, not as far as I'm aware. That would be a smart thing to add though. However, there's a hot key to get into the menu, the settings menu now, which is escape. So you hit settings or escape, click settings, and then you're already at the grid menu. You don't have to go up to file settings. You know what I mean? So at least you have that bit a little bit faster. I just noticed the music. Get that back. It's so quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel like our software would be the ideal isometric maps. I don't know. I've seen this. There's a, there's, it just looks so beautiful in our 3D perspective already. If we could figure out a way to make the maps work isometric, especially for multi level, oh my gosh, that'd be awesome. But yeah, it does sound like a pain to implement. Okay. Let me see here. Okay, let's do another giveaway really quick before I forget. We're going to start the next giveaway. Remember, if you won already, please don't participate. It'll, it shouldn't qualify you, but anyway, please give others a chance to participate. So the next giveaway is going now. You guys got 10 minutes to enter. You must be following the stream, so hit that follow button and then type exclamation damn. You can only enter one time. So... Um, before I move on to the next bit about the update, does anyone have any questions about this update? 
Uh, you know, do you have any uh, questions about what's in it or how certain features work, how you can utilize them, etc.? Also, you know, before we move on to, I want to talk about the tokens a little bit. So we include a bunch of free tokens, like I said. You know, there's basic classes, bard, barbarian, etc., druid. You also can import uh, any of your paid, you know, packs from Hero Forge or any of your, you know, ones that you've purchased, your 3D miniatures. Not a 3D print, but the 3D digital miniature. Um, and then... You also get five free tokens from Hero Forge when you link your account from Hero Forge to Dungeon Alchemist, which you don't even have, you don't ever have had to even bought anything on Hero Forge. You just need the free account. Yes. So the standalone tents can change colors and the, uh, the windows and doors on them can, but the wall pieces cannot. That being said, though, let me show you something. I think, you know, Vim's a wizard and our team's awesome. And they actually added some flat wall 10 options as well. Some of them are tattered and kind of bent, but you could put these around the whole edge if you wanted to and just color those. Can uh, someone type up, Vody? I mean, Will, we know each square is five foot or whatever system of measurement you use, as long as you have the grid up. It's not impossible to do a little bit of math. I know it's it's not it's not as simple as most VTTs with their draw tool, but keep in mind this is a limited VTT at the moment if it, if at all. You know what I mean? So I mean another thing you could probably use an asset that lays on its side like a like a pole or a beam something that like has a set length and then kind of use that as a measurement. You know what I mean? I guess you could use like um, like the diagonal wall because it can always be extended. <laughs> no, that's way too big. I don't know. There are some flat, thin things. Let's see what we could find. Some sort of tool, probably. Like a pin. Like a chisel. Yeah, you're still not going to know the measurement. Yeah, the plank, but it's like you have to know the exact measurement. Honestly, unless you have something that's a visual reference of size, probably not. <laughs> anyway. Skeleton, that's funny. Yeah, why not? Vim uh, added a flat skeleton. Where is he? Where is that skeleton at? Okay. I there it is. You just put that in between people, you know. We're gonna do as as we're gonna call him Carl. And it's it's as three car as the <laughs> three Carl's distance from now on. <laughs> um so uh i have heard from the developers that fog of war is something they're considering in the future so don't rule out at least some basic vtt functions <laughs> anyway yeah let's look at this dragon skeleton because it's pretty cool i think cot made this cot von Tilo. The Dagron. Don't let the Dagron dag on. Man, that thing is cool. More like. Hmm. I don't know why it's not going. It's probably just because the room's too full. Tent. When you type tent, all tent-like objects come up. As long as you know what kind of keyword you're looking for, 
almost everything comes up. And we're merging more and more objects together all the time. Let's, uh, let's create a new map really quick. Let's see here. We're going to do a desert with some... Actually, you know what? I made a map the other day. Or started making a map. Let's take a look at it. So I had some maps planned, but they, they kind of bugged out, and I don't I think it was because all the iterations of patches we've been getting. Started building this palace with like a market square, and this was gonna be the slum side, and then this was gonna be a little bit better side. I was working it all out a little bit at a time. I was gonna put a guard stations on the walls. Oh man, there's many new objects. New wall types, new windows, this telescope is a new object. You have new floors, new chairs, plates, pillows, for instance. Speaking of objects, there is the object brush has gotten a huge overhaul. We introduced the object brush in the last update, but now it's got a huge improve, a lot of improvements to the UI. The erase object button is front and center, easy to find, very big instead of buried at the bottom of the object brushes. You can change brush size and brush density like before, but now we've divvied things out into categories. You have a nature category, rock formations, storage, ruins, decay, food and drink, furniture, library, lights, tools, treasure, vials, weaponry. So, say you wanna drop a bunch of books. Remember the size of the brush dictates the size of the book or the size of the object. There is like so many quality of life improvements in this update, it's ridiculous. It took me so long to find them all. So let's say you want some coins. Speaking of which, we added a lot of new coin assets or treasure assets. Uh, a couple months ago, we put up a challenge in our Discord saying, hey, if you guys retweet this tweet a thousand times, We'll add, you know, a, tr a content, a treasure content pack to the next update. I actually pitched this to the devs and said a lot of the viewer or a lot of our community ask if there's more treasure options. Because before this, it was just big piles of coins, basically. So now you have coins from like small sizes. By the way, this coin just absolutely looks stunning when you get up close to it. There we go. I really appreciate you all participating in that first off, but as a result of which we got to spoil you guys with guys and gals with these uh, new assets. Got this coin purse here. We've got some, uh, you know, gold bars, silver bars, different size, gold and silver bars. You got the various stacks of coins. This purple pouch actually has a color slider on it, so you can get in and really change the colors of that one. And then I actually kind of feel like the color sliders on the jewels should be part of this as too, because you get a whole bunch of different jewel types as well. And then there's one more object. I do wish all the treasure chests were under that subcategory of uh, treasure, but it is what it is. It's this, uh, this chest. It is a treasure chest. This doesn't look ominous at all. What do you think, guys and gals? Does it look safe? You know what? Let's let's test something here. Hey, Vim, can we ask you a question relative to tokens? How do they export to your VTT of choice when you have tokens on the map? Like, what does that look like? Is it just an image or are the tokens somewhere in the JSON information? Like, how does that work? Well, I'm dead. Gotcha. <laughs> Obsid. We'll know in a week, I guess, right? Five days, rain or shine. We're gonna, five to seven days. We're going to know. Um, Obsid. That is, I mean, it's technically a construct mimic if you think about it. 
Constructs can be mimics too. Congratulations, Obsid. I'm going to whisper you your code. One moment here. I have like a bajillion tabs open. Let's see here. Yep, everyone, give Opposite a pat on the back, you know? Congratulations. They overcame the odds and won. They basically just played like a battle royale with y'all. Like a hundred entries in that one. I really want to say thank you to you all being here today. I mean, it means the world to me. We still got a lot of content to go over. I was going to kind of work on this build and reveal stuff to you as we went. But, um, and we're going to do at least one more giveaway before the end of the stream. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very excited about this update. There's so many very uh, new quality of life features so many new objects so new biomes new you know new rooms the steam workshop have we talked about steam workshop today let's talk about it real quick so let's say you've built this amazing map and you want to share it with the community what was the process for sharing a map prior you take some screenshots you'd export the dam save the dam file export for your vtt of choice or vtt's of choice if you are a creator on say kofi or patreon or doing commission work and then you send it out right well let's say you want to make that step those process that process of sharing your maps and getting name out of, about your building or you just want to share your maps with anyone out there you can now use steam workshop so <clears throat> Uh, when Fata Morgana launches on the 29th, uh, knock on wood, you'll be able to open Steam Workshop and publish a map. So you can click on and take a screenshot of the map if you want. You can title the map, set access to private, friends, or public and put a description then you can publish it i'm not ready to publish this map so i'm not going to but let's see let's hit browse really quick so you could see a few maps like this is the one we were looking at earlier the radiant bazaar and then so these are different ones that have been uploaded by our various, you know, the devs and, and uh, artists. We're just testing things and looking at stuff. But as you can see, you can upload them and see who they're uploaded by. Um, also, you could look at your maps. So any of them you have uploaded, you can look at them. Uh, you can edit the info on them, unpublish it, see how many people have looked at it, how many downloads there are, vote on it yourself, see the rating of it. Very neat. Very neat. <clears throat> Now, this is a very limited purview of the Steam Workshop. I'm assuming with time we'll update it so you have more options to add more screenshots and add comments and stuff from within Dungeon Alchemist. But in the interim, you can go into Steam Workshop. Once this launches, you can go to Steam Workshop under the community hub in Dungeon Alchemist. There's going to be a workshop tab. And then you can comment on builds and you can if it's your build you can link your social information such as like where your you know your twitter or facebook etc you can also um add more images to it whether they're going to be viewable in this browser uh, in dungeon alchemist or not i don't know but if there are more screenshots you can look at them there anyway um you go, oh wow i noticed the map size there Anyway, it's very neat. You could subscribe to maps, so if they're getting updated, you constantly know about it. Very, very cool. 
actually. Very good. Thank you, though. My wife just brought me some water, and I had plenty still. Raise of hands. Who is excited for Fata Morgana? Man, I love this map. Design so far, I've been having fun with it. That throne is just kick-ass. Pardon my French. Fata Morgana Fizz is our next update. That's the title of our next update for Dungeon Alchemist, the program you're looking at right now. Dungeon Alchemist is an AI-powered map-making utility. It's available on Steam. It allows you to build battle maps, uh, you know, rooms, environmental maps, etc. in a snap. Or you can roll up your sleeves and build the maps of your dreams. Taking hours and hours meticulously building maps. What happened to that pergola? I had another one right here. Anyway. So, in the next update, there's many room types. So, this here is a, pal a palace hammam. And, uh, you know, I just kind of decorate it. It's got, like, these little tables where you could put, like, a hookah or food, tea, whatever, games. And then I added the pillows for comfort and cushioning, you know, for the chairs because I thought it looked pretty dope. All the pillows, a lot of the pillows at least, have color sliders so you can kind of change them and make them look different. Um, there's lots and lots of different pillows, and we actually have a pillow eraser to just kind of show you all the variety pillows anyway you can use it after the 29th when we update dungeon alchemist for free with fata morgana our next themed update which is a desert biome So the last couple of days on Discord, people have been showing like different tokens and lays. They do tokens in Dungeon Alchemist and oh, they wish Hero Forge was in it or they how they do Hero Forge tokens in Dungeon Alchemist We're using uh, like slobs and an image overlay like I showed people on stream almost every week. Now you don't need that. You just import your Hero Forge tokens. Love the little baths we have. There's so many new baths. Oh my gosh. Look at all these different pools and stuff. Lots of beautiful new pools. Let me just delete that one and put in a fresh one so you can kind of look at it. That one's, wow. That one's gorgeous. Not gonna lie. Anyway. Uh, actually, <laughs> Vim, dude, that made me laugh so hard, honestly. And it straight up reminded me of Truman Show when you posted that. Right? Don't we all need Roman baths in our house? Is there a way to dirty the water a little bit? Uh, Vim said that there will be a way to do that in the next update. Yes. Um, Professor Upsidism asks any pl future plans for future or any plans for futuristic updates. If there are any updates that are like cyberpunk or, you know, future or modern or anything like that, they would be after we finish all of our promised Kickstarter stretch goals. So, you know, there's like probably seven or eight left, including Fata Morgana. And once those are done, then we consider Dungeon Alchemist complete. It's it's no longer in early access and if we do those types of themes they would be an expansion like a paid update a paid expansion vim you taking off hey have a good one my man thank you for being here i appreciate your help we don't know in fact usually the devs sit down and decide on a theme after they finish the theme 
If it were me, though, I'd do Winter Wonderlands because, you know, the timing of it. Hey, Vim, thank you. Here, you know what? I actually have to step aside for just one minute. I got to... Sorry, I I just got to tell my wife something really quickly, but while I'm gone, I'm just going to play the video showing you about our new uh, feature, the Hero Forge feature. I'll be right back. In our next update, we added the ability to place tokens in your maps, but not just any tokens. We are proud to announce that Dungeon Alchemist now supports the Hero Forge API. This means your purchased Hero Forge digital minis can be imported to Dungeon Alchemist. Link your Hero Forge account to sync your digital mini purchases, and in the process, unlock five free tokens. We have also included a few free tokens to help get you started. Your tokens can be moved freely around the map with a mouse or keyboard. And last but not least, we have given all tokens a first-person mode. Click the eyeball icon and enter your character's point of view to get a better look around, take screenshots, and even record. Plata Morgana is a free automatic update for Dungeon Alchemist releasing by month's end, so stay tuned. Okay. You saw it. Hopefully you heard it. <coughs> um, you can create tokens for free, Grimrick. One moment here. So I took an image of where you need to go to do it but i'll just show you guys on this stream really quick so basically if you subscribe to hero forge you get uh five tokens per month or that you can or credits to buy tokens so you could make a token make it look exactly how you want in any pose with all the gear you want and then you purchase it but you have to purchase it as a specific type let me show you I made the mistake, so you didn't have to. So, let's say you've made your token, right? You spend all day building your token. This is my token, Mac Giver, the Changeling Artificer. You hit finish, and then it brings up this panel on the side here. You know what? Let me hide my camera because I'm in the way. I just... So, it brings up this panel, and all of these different types come up very confusing scroll to the bottom you'll see 3d digital you purchase the 3d digital type and then within 24 hours they'll add it as a digital download to your uh, account you can download it you get all the images and 3d files if you want to or i mean you get all the like token images for it and then you can link your account type hero forge in uh chat really quick say sue um basically these instructions if you follow them it'll show you how you can link your hero forge account once the update is available but basically you'll be able to link your hero forge account and any tokens you bought as a 3d digital or in these packs right so like this month the free pack is cyber vigilantes and then i bought city watch i bought you know a bunch of different ones because i wanted to check them out pirates kobolds zombies goblins etc so these are all these are only one credit for a huge pack so it's a great deal if you want to add a few by the way that's over here under packs it took me a minute to find that but normally it's one credit per character okay So once you set the pose, you want to get your pose where you want it before you export because then it's a purchase per pose. So basically, 
every time you set up a pose and you buy it, that's what the pose is in. By the way, whatever you name it as is what it exports to and imports to Dungeon Alchemist. So like I uh, was a dumb dumb and named my Mac copy and I had to figure out how to rename it in the coding and it was a pain and I wouldn't recommend doing it. There's like a JSON file you can do it. But anyway, long story short. Yes, of course. Ayer, yes. So let's put in a um, let's put a token on this map, and I'll show you. So here's Mac Mini. I'm Big Mac, and that's Mini Mac right there. So you can twist the token with the mouse, or here, let's pull up the grid too, so this is more visual. You can move it with the you know arrow keys from grid space to grid space. And it'll move from grid to grid, or you can drag it with the mouse. You can also kind of hold control and it de-snaps and you could put it in between squares a little bit sometimes, like on the line, or if you want it like whatever, next to something. And then lastly, you can go into first person mode, which now you can walk around in this mode and hobble from square to square. And interact with the environment by click left clicking on things like doors or lamps. So you want to turn off this lamp. And this view really brings a lot of life. Sit on my throne. Yes, this is everything the light touches is my kingdom. Um, right now it doesn't look like the grid is on in first person, so no. But every hobble is five feet um well when you record in first person it's not an export it's a screen cap or a screen grab this isn't an export feature what it is is it allows you to record and say Let's say you wanted to set up a theater of the mind scene or record for a loop for a scene. It's not a top-down map export in this when you're recording like this. Later on, we will add, you know, video export and looped exporting and stuff. And I think that's most likely going to be next update. Um, no promises, but I have heard Carl talk about it a few times saying that's what they're looking to do. What I would do is, let's say you wanted a uh, animated export. Okay, let's say you added an item that's animated. So here, let me add one that I really like from this update. First and foremost, we got the moon gate, right? It's been around a while. Chevron seven locked. Yes. And the best thing is if you record this, if you press record and interact with this, it won't show the UI at all when you record. Where's the DHD? Actually, I'm using a a remote D. <laughs> what is it? What is it called? The uh, the thing on their wrist. Man, I'm drawing a blank now that I'm under pressure. But they uh, the remote one that they use later on to just dial through. But man, oh man, I love Stargate. I've heard that there might actually be a new Stargate now that Amazon bought MGM. Anyway, so. Let's say you wanted to do an animated sequence of this, right? Showing the gate or like at this angle, right? All you need to do is go to view, go to hide user interface, and then you could do a screen record using something like slobs or any screen recording software. Do it for, you know, five seconds, loop that, and there you go, you've got it. You could make this as a scene, or alternatively, if you set the map as the same size as the export, let's say you recorded it 1920 by 1080 and made your map that same size, whatever you're using it as on, you know, say fantasy grounds or, uh, you know, foundry or whatever, you make it those same dimensions, then it would end up matching. So you can kind of, in this version, yes. 
When you record in the hide UI mode, the grid lines will be present. But when you record in first person or cinematic, no, they're gone. So this is a different mode. Hide UI mode is more like if you want to use Dungeon Alchemist as a limited VTT, uh, like on a flat panel television, or like if you're broadcasting like a screen share over Discord, or let's say you're not using a VTT such as Foundry. Let's say you're just using a flat panel television or a yeah, like a projector in person. Now, if you want to hide the grid lines, this is the grid is mainly for people who print or use Dungeon Alchemist as a VTT themselves. So if you don't use Dungeon Alchemist as a VTT, typically best to export without the grid lines present. Um, the grid will automatically, with your VTT of choice, snap to the map size and make it perfect. So you don't need to worry about exporting with the grid present. You know, Backlash, that's a great, great question, but it looks like at the moment there's only Hero Forge minis. Um, but you get a bunch of free ones, whether or not you've purchased any on Hero Forge and whether or not you've linked your account. So you get all of the uh, a bunch of character types, a bunch of monsters, a bunch of NPCs. And then when you link your account, even if you've never purchased a single thing on Hero Forge or never subscribed, you get five more free tokens. So it's actually got a, it's pretty good. Hey, see you later, wizard. Yeah, one second. So if you want to go into first person mode, you make sure you have a token present. There's two types of first person. Well, I guess the true first person is on the token itself. You click that. Now you're in FP mode. If you want, you can press F to take a screenshot. It'll take a screenshot without UI. If you press R, it'll record without the UI, like that play button or the stuff at the top. So it'll showing it right now, but it's not present. One second. So here's the one we just recorded, as you can see. This definitely has Gual Palace vibes, right? Ooh. Anyway, okay, let's, uh, I noticed the music stopped playing. Let's do another giveaway. Why don't we not? Who's interested in uh, winning a copy of Dungeon Alchemist? Alrighty. I'm gonna make sure my Twitch is back up. Okay, we're gonna start the last. Yeah, this will be the well, maybe two more before the end of the stream. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how uh, we'll see how chat is the rest of the stream. If y'all are hyped, excited. Dropping follows, dropping hosts. But we'll, we'll, we'll consider another giveaway. I think we hit 200 viewers today, so that's technically four we should be doing. Okay. So, one neat thing about the update is diversity. This new update. Many objects... You can click on the object and see if it has a color brush. So in our last update, we added this color brush to say like lights and you could change the hue of lights through a few filters. You now have this color slider. Notice how the cup is changing. Excuse me. So the diversity of objects goes from a single object up to, you know, like 10 objects per object with the color. Here we are in the market stall area. I've been setting up for this map. Let's 
black and white circles. You mean the like the doors and stuff? These you left click on them and they interact when you're in this mode. Sack. Yes, the cut it does cite for psoriasis here. I was actually gonna put a potion vendor like right here. So let's do that really quickly. So there is actually, first off, a vile brush, which I'm very happy about. So you already have a ton of diversity. By the way, I suggested to Carl that now that we have the, the slider for these objects for colors, that all the vials or objects that have color sliders when they're dropping down should also randomly pick a color and drop down one of those too to increase the diversity like a ton. But, uh, and he said that's a great idea, but it won't be in this update, unfortunately. But so hopefully in the future we'll, we'll get, ah, see if I do that, it's gonna delete all of that. Let's move these. Gotta be careful with the object eraser. It gets a little zealous. Let's just say that. It's easier to just move everything away than delete everything by hand. I wish it got a little bit smaller, but it's a work in progress. It's going to get better. And like, I mean, the iteration from the last one to this one is so impressively different. So we've added a bunch of vials here. Let's go through and see which ones we can colorize. Many of them, though, have the color thing. Honestly, if you wanted to use Dungeon Alchemist as a VTT, I would recommend playing through a service like like through Discord, okay? So you would stream or screen share Dungeon Alchemist in the hide UI mode in a top-down with a grid present. So you'd go into settings, you'd activate a grid, and then you would go to view and hide the UI, and then you could basically see the map in this top down mode but if your players you know if you wanted to give your players different angles you could do that or if you wanted to show your players a first person view you could do that yep so you could use a projector a vorpal board or just lay a flat screen tv down uh, a projector aiming down at something or at a wall or at the ceiling. They will not. You control them for them in this mode. <clears throat> Ideally, I mean, more or less, this is just kind of more like... It's not a perfect VTT. It's a work in progress. It'll get there. Let's just say... We're not going to be a full VTT ever, but we will be able to fill the void for a lot of people who need it to do that. Oh, I've never, I never thought of that. Yeah, I assume someone could. Well, that's one of our many stretch goals, Saytona. What's the word on the dungeon button where you push and a full dungeon is created? So... Every couple of months, we release a new update. Each new update is one of our many stretch goals from Dungeon Alchemist. So every time we update, another stretch goal is completed. The next update, no, the most, all I can say is the next one that's going to release is Fata Morgana, the one we're showcasing right now. It's a desert-themed biome with lots of quality of life improvements. Instant Dungeon, I'd assume, is going to be one of our later roadmap items however we will not leave early access until we finish every single uh one of our stretch goals from our kickstarter 
Um, and we are, you know, bust, like I said, busting out one of those almost every two or three months. Uh, can you share the upvotey, please, Seisu? Uh, if you want to check our roadmap, upvotey is where you want to go. If you want to make a suggestion, upvotey is where you want to go. It is our suggestion board and our roadmap. So you could see what the devs are working on, what's planned to be worked on, uh, you know, what's coming in the next update, etc. That link in chat is a good one. Uh, can you drop user voice as well? So one thing we're pushing for is to try and get a category for Dungeon Alchemist here on Twitch. There isn't one. Right now we're streaming under Dungeons and Dragons uh, because there is no category for Twitch. We have tried every normal avenue to get a category. So our user voice is kind of our last ditch effort. That is a petition space ran by Twitch. It's their petition database. But if you have a Twitch account, like everyone here in chat does, you can open that up on a separate tab and you can upvote it and leave a comment saying that you're interested in Dungeon Alchemist getting a category. This doesn't just benefit us, it benefits anyone who wants to stream Dungeon Alchemist. So if you have a streamer out there, a creator who streams maps, map making Dungeon Alchemist, but doesn't have a home to do it right now, a great reason to support them or if you want to make sure we get a category i just want to make sure all the creators on twitch have a home right now they're on DD, they're on ttrpg just chatting art they're spread to the four winds and it's really hard to find dungeon alchemist streams thank goodness you can add tags now so i add the dungeon alchemist tag but honestly if anything i would take a cartography or a map making category that would cover you know all the various map makers dungeon draft incarnate etc but i would prefer a dungeon alchemist category obviously oh my gosh is my cam been off this whole time i am so dumb anyway i appreciate you guys uh you know supporting the uh the user voice petition if you could jump on there and leave uh you know an upvote and a comment very very much appreciate it um, also, if you're not familiar, we are all over the internet. We have a Reddit, we have a Twitter, we have a Facebook, um, we have a TikTok now even, okay? I'm, honestly, I am posting all over the place. We have short form content, long form content, tutorials, memes, regular posts, Discord, anyway. So pick the network of your preference. We're going to share a bunch of links here in chat. Whatever one is your favorite, make sure you check it out and uh, follow us there. That way you know where to find us in the future and know when we have streams like this and what's being released, etc. Cetera, et cetera. There we go. I know why the Facebook one wasn't working. Fixed it. Honestly, Carol, the last week or so, I've been running, burning the candle at both ends. I was up till about 2 a.m. Because like I said, I'm in a beta build. So when they patch things, sometimes other things get buggy. So I had a bunch of maps I made this week that don't work anymore um, really well for like first person mode. But any map I made after that update works fine and a bunch of old ones work fine. So it was just like the ones I made specifically to show off today wouldn't work so last night i was up till two making new maps finalizing them this morning doing last minute shots in them for the reveal video teaser trailer that went up all over our socials <clears throat> yeah probably distorted turtle congratulations you won let me just give you some knuckles really quick
Okay, Tortle, are you still here? Yes, you are. I'm gonna hurry and uh, whisper you a code. Just one moment, okay? While I get that set up for you. Portal, once you see the whisper, can you confirm in chat that you got it? Um, I want to ma make sure you all aware that our giveaways are legitimate. They're digital, instantly delivered giveaways for Steam codes, meaning as long as you have a Steam account, you can redeem it instantly, or you can give it to a friend and they can redeem it. Um, our giveaways are on the up and up. They're very legitimate, and uh, we do our best to make them fair by running them through a bot. So... Congratulations, Distorted Turtle. Thank you, thank you so much. For everyone that participated, can we give uh, a quick pat on the back for Distorted Turtle? Portal, my band. Turtle, let, let, I gotta hear the story about your name. I'm assuming you main Turtles, right? Can you roll sleight of hand instead? You want to see some maps printed? You know, I don't have any printed on me right now. I mean, I, I suppose I could print one really quick. One second. Let me turn on my printer, get it warm enough. Yes. I am like, I am an elder millennial, so I, I tend to have a paper printer, a 3D printer, a vinyl printer. <laughs> I have all the printers. <laughs> Okay, let's see here. Oh my, now I'm way washed out. What happened? There we go. No, you can't. There's no 3D export for Dungeon Alchemist at this time. Whether it's for a VTT or for 3D printing, there's none at this time. And I don't think there will ever be for 3D printing because our assets aren't designed with 3D printing in mind. They're designed to be viewed from a top down or at these angles. They're heavily detailed assets, but they're not meshed correctly for 3D printing. In addition to that... Um, but you can print them with ink just fine. So um, we're gonna actually just, hurry. let me say, oops. Let me save this and we'll open a new map. We'll print it on stream just for y'all. So I actually have an eight and a half by 11, so US letter. So American letter, okay. We're going to hurry and let's do a Badlands. Actually, you know what? Yeah, Badlands with... Let's do a Mesa. 
Let's do a river and water level. So this run is already generated for an eight and a half by 11. Here I already have an environmental map and it's ready for print. This is perfectly sized for eight and a half by 11. When you make a map in print mode, you can pick the paper size you want or you could set a custom. Now keep in mind, when you set the paper size, either you need to have a printer that can print this size or you need to work with a print shop that can print it for you. So either research that first then decide on the size. So I already know I can do, you know, American letter. So I'm going to do that. However, you could say build a digital map of any size, say 50 by 50 and save it as a digital JPEG and then run it through a program like say Rasterbator is a free third party app that allows you to rasterize the program or rasterize the image into, it cuts it up into the exact same size image over and over. So you could do a bunch of eight and a half by 11. So it tiles the image out for you. There is a poster maker in Adobe that allows you to do the same thing. So essentially, uh, essentially you can make any size map you want. If you only have a little printer at home, you can print it in a bunch of different sheets and then just tape them together on a table or you know put them all together on a piece of cardboard or a backer like a poster board with glue so they're all right next to each other but anyway so let's say i've generated this map and i want to print it okay you go to export if you want to print we're going to do it at eight and a half by eleven right you could set your perspective let's do limited perspective or ortho because it actually fits better Limited perspective. Notice there's a little border around the edge, and they do that when you go into a 3D mode. They leave a border around the edge because in the 3D mode, it would cut off buildings or assets hanging on the edges of the square. So they, they leave that one square excess so at least almost anything on there can be seen. Hey, it might be a possibility in the future, Fizz, but right now you just have third-party options. It's really not that hard. It takes a moment. So when you go to print, you want to export at a higher DPI. The higher DPI, the better. In fact, I recommend max DPI for print. At this point, you can set the color to be grayscale if you want to save ink or color if you want full color. You can um, you know, set the perspective to just ortho top down, limited or full 3D. And then lastly, you can turn the grid on and off set the color so it pops and you know transparency level then when you hit export it exports as a jpeg so as you can see here i'm gonna just save it in fada promo and then we're gonna do test test map save now that is exported if i go find that file So I can open this in the, you know, the photo browser in my computer, right? So this is just the photo viewer, right? And at this point, there's several ways you could print this. You could open it in any photo editor you want and use the print prompt there. You can open it in the photo viewer in Windows and use the print prompt there. You can open it in Photoshop. If you have that, use the print prompt there. But keep in mind, every computer is different, every printer is different, and every print software prompt is different. So you have to account for that when you print. This image is already sized to an eight and a half by 11 it will print perfectly with it it will have these white borders so it doesn't waste ink around the edges so let's say you want to print you tell it to print your print prompt comes up it you tell it which printer you want to use make sure you do not do any weird margins or that it's not you know at a shrink to fit you want it fill the page as much as possible and you want it full page in print size if anything check your print settings to make sure if you have any extra ones to make sure that borderless printing is on if borderless printing is off then there'll be a border that's even bigger or if you have margins those will be present you need to make sure you adjust these things by hand I always set everything to high quality and make sure it's in color. That's a personal preference. Okay. 
and now I am going to print it. But notice the edge here of this image matches the print preview very well where the cactus is. It looks really good. Then you just hit print. Jasco, you know, I mean, you say it like everyone can use Blender. Jeez, man. <laughs> I'm sorry that this program isn't perfectly catered to you, but it works very well for people who want to build maps easily, quickly. You know, if you want to export for 3D printing, use Blender or a different program that's better suited for you. There's no need to pout over it. So, um, if you could send them the link for my cave tutorial in the interim... Um, I actually have a very good cave tutorial on our YouTube that teaches you how to build caves using the existing tools and assets within Dungeon Alchemist right now. I'm actually going to probably update it for sandstone caverns too. Um, but I get it, Jasko. Some things, if you have the ability, are better, but not everyone can crack open Blender and make an animated scene in it every, in a minute. You know what I mean? You get what I'm saying, though. But yeah, you have that ability, honestly. Oh, man, I must be running out of ink. I can tell right now that I am just by looking at this print. <laughs> oh, well. Well, I printed it. It's not the best looking print because I am probably running out of color. But yeah, you got it there. There, let me turn off the green screen filter here. Of course, Kraken, you can make the map any size you want. The only limitation is the printer you have available or a print shop you have access to or your ability to print in multiple, you know, slice segments like a rasterized copy. We discussed that a bit ago. So when you go to create your map, you set your print size depending on what size you want it to. American poster here. If you want a bigger custom one, you can set it here. So you can set a width of 120 by 100 and... 80 and set your tile size to whatever you want as centimeters or inches whatever set it as width or vertical whatever then it'll create so let's say you wanted a 120 by 180 one centimeter square Honestly, I use my printer like once every two months, so the ink cartridges are probably dried up. That's a very big map, by the way. My computer will probably crash. I've never loaded a map that large. 100 by 100 is the biggest I've loaded. Keep in mind, DA is meant for smaller maps, you know? 50 by 50 and smaller. That doesn't mean it can't do it. You just need a... The more powerful your computer... The bigger the map you can make and the more objects you can put on it. <laughs> yeah, I probably crashed it trying to load this. We'll see. My computer, I need a new graphics card and CPU. It's dated. So I'm sporting a GTX 1080. And an i7-7700. I built my machine about seven years ago. On my stream on my own channel, uh, I mainly stream console games. So I run them through a capture card. So my PC is runs great for that. Well, I In the PC games I stream, I know. I'm waiting for this to load. There's nothing else I can do. It's not going to load in the, in the interim. I can't make it any faster. I'm going to close a few tabs, see if we can speed this up. Yeah, turn off the music. What else can I close? I'm probably going to have to shut this. This is the biggest map by far I have ever attempted to load.
Well, yeah, I love my 1080, but um, when I'm done with it, I, I'm probably going to give it to my son. And then he has a 1060, which is going in my wife's computer. She's on like a really old 7970. The fans are going out in it. A GTX 7970. And then I'm probably going to look and get in a, like a 30 series when they go clearance here. Yeah, you know what? This thing ain't going to load. I'm going to close it and reload it. Yeah, let's do one more. Why not? We hit 200 viewers today, so. You know. Y'all went the distance. music back on reloading Zidane is an alchemist so my computer cannot load a map that large unfortunately I don't have the power to do that while I'm streaming if I were offline maybe it would work but remember I'm running essentially two copies of dungeon alchemist if I'm doing that so I'm streaming it in 1080, 1920 by 1080, 8K bit, well, whatever, 6K bit rate that Twitch does, and then running the program. I mean, Fizz, if you want less vegetation, just generate the map with less vegetation. No vegetation. Or, you know, generate it again and wipe it out with a brush. It's really, I mean... It's not that hard to make a few subtle adjustments. So just set the brush for the eraser down and get rid of a few of the objects that you don't want around. Boom, far less. So the object eraser is a speed tool that allows you to quickly remove objects. You could set the object eraser size. You could set the, uh, in t it works in tandem with the object brush, which there's varied brushes. So let's say you want to add a pile of cactus there or some moss near the edge of the water. Right? Let me set up the next giveaway really quick before I forget. Okay. Hit that follow button to and type exclamation damn to enter. If you're not following, you cannot qualify. You can only enter one time. Um, good luck, everyone. Just a bunch of helmets. <laughs> <laughs> That looks like a scene for the Urukai, just a pile of helmets. You know, like the outfitters for the Urukai. Whoa. <laughs> well, you know when they're like, they're breeding the Urukai and they're like, making all their swords and they got like the forges going they're cutting down the trees and and then in the background you see the armor is making all the helmets and there's just a big pile of them he keeps throwing them into <laughs> cobweb brush is my favorite put some bones in the river but you have all sorts of object brushes. The cheese brush is really the pivotal, like, honestly, it's the peak Dungeon Alchemist content. I know this is what everyone wanted.
We just keep stacking. Yep. I uh, put in a request for that since last week, and Carl put it in for us. Objects wouldn't stack on top of each other. They wouldn't even stack on top of, like, tables last week. And I pointed that out, and it is now... It's the fix -it. Keep in mind, you know, you may want to do it in a flat area. Pillow! <laughs> so many and pillows. Can I just point out that these pillows are stunning? Look at the detail on them. The next reveal, I've revealed pretty much everything we're going to cover this stream. We've covered Hero Forge tokens, first person mode on tokens, hide UI mode. Uh, you know, we've showed a bunch of quality of life features this, uh, this stream, such as when you click on an object and highlight the plus symbol, you now know what the name of an object is, so you can find it easier. Honestly, the, the all cheese is load bearing, so you don't need to worry about it. Thirty rollers. What? You weren't following me before? I'm I'm ashamed. No, I'm just kidding. Honestly, we've been revealing tons of stuff the last couple of weeks. We revealed the grid, uh, the hex grid on stream today. I mean, there's been a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Hero Forge in first-person view and hide UI mode. And also, we revealed the date of the launch being the 29th. I mean, if that's not big enough for you, I'm sorry. I don't know how I can satiate your desires. Because, like, I don't know how much to, how to get much bigger than that. <laughs> like... Okay, first off, tokens is huge in its own. The partnership... Here, let's generate the new map. Ups. Uh, new map. Let's do a Badlands, Grand Canyon, River, Cacti, Water Level. So... Oh, shit. I think I... Unfavorited mine earlier. Yep. Okay. Here is my token. Okay. This is actually a token I imported from Hero Forge that I handcrafted. This is my Changeling Artificer Mac Giver. Okay. I mean, why not? You could put it in the bottom of any round room and make a custom uh, round floor if you wanted to, for sure. Just a little mad. I can make a valley of the pillows in moments. So now you can place tokens in the environment. Not only that, you can either use Dungeon Alchemist as a limited VTT by hiding the UI and going in a top-down mode and... If you, uh, let's say you add the grid, you can use that to, as a reference. So let's say you, you know, you know how to do rules and dice and stuff for Dungeon Alchemist without VTT assistance. Let's say you're like one of them forever DMs that knows how to do that stuff. Like it's the back of their hand. Using Dungeon Alchemist as a VTT is a great option because you get the 3D multiple angles. You could see all the animations and whatnot. So let's go into, say, cinematic mode. You could be in a top-down like this, or you could just go into this top-down and then hide UI. Click on the token. Use the, the arrow keys or the mouse key to navigate the map. So hide UI is great if you're a content creator who wants to take 1080 screenshots at varied angles using third-party software or screen recording with third-party software it's also great if you're a dm who wants to use dungeon alchemist as a limited vtt 
So you can broadcast this view like a second screen through a Vorpal board, projector, flat screen TV laid on a tel on a table, uh, Discord screen share, whatever. So unfortunately, you can only import your accounts. I mean, I'm that doesn't mean you can't get the access keys from your friends and family, but you can only link one account at a time. So I don't think there's any way to do that. Um, but uh, basically what I would recommend doing is just have one person in your crew have an account that buys the minis or has a monthly you know, subscription and everyone contributes to it and then they make minis for the group and purchases them. Likely the DM in this case. You can also just grab it with the mouse and move it around. Notice it snaps to the boxes. And then lastly, you can click on the eye and go into first person mode. Whoa. God, I got a super bounce there. Let's dive into the water. You guys want to check? Oh, let's check it out, guys and gals. Woo -hoo -hoo. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. Got out. Wee hee hee hee. <laughs> yeah if you press space you can jump uh for w a s d f or arrow keys also alternatively controls the movement it's like first person controls you can use the left mouse click to interact with environmental objects that interact such as torches lights um you know objects that have movement on them so Let's say you could record a chase scene. So how I imagine doing this is let's say, um, you know, your players walk into a, a new area for the first time. You just drop this scene. You could show like a trigger when it comes in a recording of them looking across the environment and then it goes into the top down. So they kind of get like this 3D cool view before it goes into top down. Or if they're like, hey, I want to see how deep, how tall is this cliff into the water? You could click on their token and look, show them the downward view. You know what I mean? There's lots of ways to do this. Yeah, there's already a few monster minis included. So you have a bunch that are included and you can buy packs or create custom ones on Hero Forge and buy them. So I bought a few packs for a credit each. I've got a Brigand pack. I've got uh, this Cyber Vigilante pack came for free this month. I got the free hero, free ranger, free wizard, free hero rogue, and the free fighter by linking my Hero Forge account to Dungeon Alchemist. That's completely free. You don't have to have purchased anything or have a Hero Forge monthly subscription. Just a free Hero Forge account. I also got some goblins. I got some kobolds. Got, you know, a few of my own personal tokens. Got some pirates, some skeletons. Here's my wife's token, Zinni. That's her harangan. Um, but you get a free uh, handful of free ones. The monk, paladin, priest, ranger, rogue, wizard, uh, null, kobold, skeleton, lizard, folk, and troll. And then you get an alchemist, a cultist, a tavern keep, and a guard. But then once you link your accounts, any ones you've purchased in packs or as a digital, you get it. Rufio! 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 So, little known fact about Mac. Mac fact for you. In first grade, Hook was all the rage. That was the movie for all the kids that year. It was a big movie that year. For most kids my age and uh i wanted so badly to be rufio for halloween and my mom is just a badass she went out and found the like these cool like faux hawks and dyed them the red orange black color and made the like the skeleton armor for me and we found a sword and painted it gold and put a coconut cover on it she went like hardcore all out i had jeans with the cuts in them and like I was the best damn Rufio you ever saw for Halloween. And honestly, we went to like the local mall because they used to do like a giveaway, like candies at all the, the stores. And it was a quick way to get a lot of candy inside, you know, if it was a cold year. 
and we went into the mall and oh my gosh just walking down the aisles and everyone was Rufio! just screaming it over and over and over again it was awesome anyway that's my my uh my tie-in to that name congratulations rufio didn't mean to steal the moment from you also really enjoyed the band rufio for a number of years as well rufio are you still here in chat can you oh there you are i see you let me uh find you and i'm going to send you this last code Rufio, I just sent you the key in a whisper. Can you please uh, verify that you got that um, in chat publicly, please, for me? And then that way we uh, we know you got it. I see you, you whispered me, but can you say it there too? Just I like to add legitimacy to the giveaway so people know. Oh man, the 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 cast of that show was amazing. Robin Williams though killed it. Killed it. Dustin Hoffman as well. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> oh, right. As one of the pirates. The Boo Box pirate, right? Wasn't she? The Boo Box. <laughs> so, do we have any more questions about Fata Morgana? So, so far, I have revealed today tokens. We've revealed a bunch of UI improvements. FPS mode, hide UI mode, um, tool tips to show you the names of objects. So you can place an object or click on an object and click the plus symbol. So let's say you generate a map. You're like, what is this object? You click on it, now you know. We added hex grid improvements. So in the grid settings, you can now go to grid and not only turn it to square, but a hex grid. And you can set the size of the hex grid. So if you use GURPS or Battletech or whatever, this is a great for you. Do we have any more questions, requests, or anything like that before uh, we end the stream today? Satona you can only ai generate draw rooms at one level that you set when you generate the map so when you generate a new map you can go here and set your water or your room placement level to water level plateau or mountaintop once you've configured that for your map it's set that for the rest of the build so i'm just going to generate a plateau one really quick but that doesn't mean you can only build at that level so you can only do draw room at that level that means the AI generated rooms are only at that level. So I'm gonna just hurry and make a tent. So this is the plateau level. Let's say you wanted to build up at this level. So first off, you go to objects, structural. We have a ton of objects that can be placed anywhere at any height. Stone platforms, stone construction objects many of these stone objects they snap to the grid can be replicated snap together so you could essentially build like a, a lookout post up here or a wall or whatever you can get creative with it stair stack on it object stack on that now that's just one example we also have round objects these round objects round tenth sides round walls they can be placed so let's turn collisions off and we can put them up on top here. We'll hold shift when we place it and then we'll rotate it and boom. So now I have, you know, I've built a round tower over here, but I built a room down here. Alternatively, if you are kind of, you know, willing to take some liberties, there are a few objects that kind of look like houses already, like doghouse, for instance. Let's say you wanted to put a little shack down here, a little fishing shack. This doghouse kind of looks like a little fishing shack already. You could add like a like a bridge on the outside, a little bridge here. And now it looks like it has like a little dock going out into the water next to it. And from above, now you're built on three levels. Now 
Yeah, I'm not going to teach people how to mess with damn files because it's not something we support nor we encourage. It can totally mess up the file. It can mess up Dungeon Alchemist, cause crashes and stuff. I'm showing you how to build structures at multiple levels. I'm sorry if that's not adequate the way I'm doing it. You know, if you want to draw rooms at multiple levels right now, there's no way stock to do it, okay? However, in the future, we hope to add that. Short of you building things manually by hand, but I've seen multi-level keeps. I've seen multi-level fortresses. I've seen multi-level structures and towns where people put tons of little things like this. If you get creative and you're willing to take a couple concessions, yes, you can. Orcus, you can't until the update comes out. But when it comes out, you'll have this tab here. You click on it. You click on the Hero Forge tab here. And then you just follow the instructions I'm going to drop in chat. Um, also, I'll just relink my account for you to see. So right here, when you click on the Hero Forge tab inside of tokens, there's this thing that says, read these instructions. It also says, Hero Forge is a service that allows you to design your own personalized miniatures, purchase them as a 3D digital miniature. So you have to have purchased the miniature as a 3D digital miniature, and you will be able to use them in Dungeon Alchemist. So... We give you a bunch of free ones to get started, as well as when you link your Hero Forge account, which by following these instructions that I'm going to show in chat or in video here. So you can scroll through. It's very straightforward. Step one, open your Hero Forge account and click account. Go to personal info, find your access key, copy and paste it in here and hit connect account. It's three steps. It's very, very easy. I'm going to relink my account. <coughs> Ugh, one moment. So I'm going to hide my screen while I do this because my access key is something personal. I don't want you guys seeing that. But when you link your account, you get five free tokens that are under characters. Uh, it's the uh, the priest here. They're also under Hero Forge listed as free. Here, let's just search free. So free fighter, free hero priest, free hero rogue, uh, free ranger, and a free wizard. But that gives you a great perspective of how that looks at a multiple tiered build. Okay, so I'm going to do some shameless promotion before the stream wraps up here. We're going to wrap up in about six minutes at 2.30 Pacific time. Um, so you got about six minutes to ask any questions. In the meantime, I'm going to drop any links that we have, uh, relative to our socials. We've got our Twitter, our Facebook, our discord. If you're not in the, if you have a discord, you have a Facebook, you have a Twitter and you're not following us already, please do. Um, it's a great way to keep up with our latest content. We share teasers there constantly. We share information relevant to streams, release dates, etc. Hey, see you later, Mr. Dirac. Star Seeker, you had to have been there right time, right place. Unfortunately, there's no way to get the Kickstarter objects now. They were a limited time for our Kickstarter people only. However, one consolation prize you have as a non-Kickstarter, just Steam pur purchaser, Steam buyer, is you get all of the stretch goals for free regardless. Um, those were something that were promised with the Kickstarter, but everyone gets them for free so it's kind of nice sadly unfortunately the kickstarter items were a limited time only and they will never ever be released hey see you later carol you have a good one okay oh man i'm just gonna say we we had over a hundred viewers almost the entire stream
Sorry, I'm just checking something here. Okay, I'm trying to remember who all won today. So, we had Obsid. There we go. That's the one I missed. And then there was one more. And it was Rufio, wasn't it? Sorry, I try to keep a very diligent, like, record of who I give keys to, so I know later. Can we pretend like you won? You know, I wish. I'm out of keys. I couldn't even give one away if I wanted to. The top of an enclosed keep? What are you trying to accomplish? Um... Yes, tent, a little mad. You can build both round and flat tents at multiple levels because they're a structural object. Um, so I have no question, but you can send my regards to all the devs, design team, great work, saving a lot of time, preparation dungeons. Thank you so much for that. I'll send your regards and love. They they love hearing all the kind words and that you guys and gals are excited. You're you're hyped that you you know love what you're seeing. Um, I hope as well that you enjoy the streams, our social posts, the tutorials, the shorts and stuff I've been sharing. Because I don't develop Dungeon Alchemist myself. I'm just the community manager, just a lowly community manager. But, uh, you know, Durky, I wish I could, but I'm all out of keys for the day. I was issued some and they are gone. Vim gave me three keys earlier. Our lead, uh, our lead designer gave me three, and he he's outie for the night. So um, he's actually left for the evening. That means no more, no moss. But you can still hang out till we leave, ask questions, learn about the update. Until then, but yeah, we'll see you guys and gals later. Huh. Man, I really wouldn't even know. Virgil Tanner's build is a really good one. Have you seen his Star Fort that he shared like a couple weeks ago? It's actually in the archive uh, community creations forum, but you can still access it. Also, one thing to keep in mind, Dirty Rollers, if you don't want the interior to show, let's say you're using, like, say, Foundry, you just lock off all that area with Fog of War so they can't see in there until they're inside or they're on top of the wall. You know what I mean? So that would be the one, the easiest approach for now. Realistically, if you want ceilings and stuff, you would, like, probably have to oversize things like this on top of stuff to make it look like it was the ceiling. Does that make sense? So it's like, oh, now you have a roof on top of this structure. So Virgil Tanner's Star Fort is what it is. That one's probably one of the most impressive fortresses, keeps I've ever seen. Let me see if I can find it and I'll link it in chat really quick. I think I just found it. One minute. I'm going to get to the top of it. The link. 
here you go if any of you want to check it out it's cra it's a crazy build it's like over a it's a hundred by a hundred at least the map is massive i definitely make sure you look at the images first before you just load it up in da and also set your your build size to low before you open it like if you go to settings and set your quality to low quality that will help improve the load time drastically okay so if you go into let's see there is this platform here that's being added these uh neat little stone platforms are being added as well as uh in round you have round tent sides being added if we go into masonry there's a bunch of new masonry like these buttresses that they like snap onto if you do sandstone buildings that they have or the adobe buildings they sand on they snap on the side as well as these little things here let me change this room type and show you uh we're gonna change this to a hovel so like all these for it why didn't it only so the ai is being a little bit uh, tweaked and the regeneration isn't perfect at the moment so like i said beta build we may have some issues where things like this don't always work but so it's still tent walls on the side, but you get the gist. So these buttresses can snap onto these like like that one is. And then they add kind of to the build. Let's uh, change the walls on the outside here. Bunch of different plaster wall types. You can also change the colors of these to kind of give it like a hue. So you put one of those on or you can keep putting them all around the house. Give it like an accent. There's also these neat little plaster niche windows you can put inside or out. Well, there is a rug. So you have this uh, customizable carpet, for instance, right? And you could put any image you want in there. I'm trying to convince Vim to load that without an edge. Uh, one second here. Find an image for you. I mean, you could really put any banner there. I'm trying to convince Vim to do this without a border. So you could creatively misuse this for like, you know, summoning circles or anything like that. But this is movable. Notice it kind of has that round edge. I just want it to be completely like no seam, no gold seam. That would be my perfect wish right there. So you could put in like, you know, customizable rugs with no edge. You could put in like, you know, magic circles or effects of any kind. Yeah, customizable holes, etc. Yes, yes, yes. I'll pass this on to Vim. Any suggestions? The reason you would want the border gone on the parchment. You could also do the same thing with parchment, but it has that gold border, but you could also hide that under like an edge of something. Okay, so customizable effects, traps, magic effects, holes, images, banners, all sorts of kind. Yep. I mean, Rabin, you can, when you export to Foundry, you just block it off with Fog of War, so they wouldn't be able to see inside anyway. Typically, those things are blocked off, you know, and revealed when they go inside. But yes, I get what you're saying. Roofs are something that's highly requested and on our upvotey. If you'd like to check that out, you can vote it up and make sure the devs are more likely to see it and put comments related to it on it. Upvotey is where we host our suggestion board and our roadmap. So you can see what we're working on, what's coming out next, leave suggestions, etc. Comment on existing ones. Oh, another object you can actually customize the label on in this update
What is that mortis thing? Hmm. That's weird. Okay, anyway. I have a couple different wines. Let's see, what's the other one I have? Max Homebrew. <laughs> oh my gosh, Dirty Rollers, that's great. All right. Right? That's that's got a lot of levels to it. I think uh, we have covered everything we're going to cover today. Remember, if you enjoyed the stream and you want to make sure you catch us in the future when we're doing, you know, sharing uh, builds, uh, doing contests, giveaways, revealing upcoming updates, make sure you follow the stream so you never miss out in the future. Um, alternatively, if you're not following us in our various social platforms, please make sure you do. We have a subreddit. We have a Facebook. We have a TikTok. We have all the places. Why isn't the TikTok command working? I'll just do it by hand. Anyway, we have all of the, you know, your favorite socials. And if you've been watching this whole time, you're like, damn, where can I get Dungeon Alchemist? Sorry for swearing. I apologize. But where can I get Dungeon Alchemist right now and play with it and be ready when the update comes out on the 29th? Yep. Damn challenges. And uh, the damn stream is getting back to normal next Saturday. We'll be doing another damn challenge next week, meaning we'll, we'll announce the winner of the Shrine Challenge, as well as we will um, announce a new challenge next week. Remember, everyone, if you enjoyed the stream, make sure you let us know on socials, on, uh, you know, in Discord, comment, uh, leave, uh, you know, reactions on the stream, um sorry, the stream recap that I put in there or in general or whatever, just let us know that you enjoyed the stream. And if you have any suggestions for future changes, let me know either in a DM or in general, and I'll do my best to try and accommodate. Um, can't make everyone happy, but we try to make the streams as approachable and easy to uh, watch for everyone. Um, other than that, like I said, 29th is most likely going to be our launch date. We're shooting for that day. Uh, unless there's a problem or some big bug or something happens before then, it will should be the 29th. So mark your calendars, all right? Um, again, my name is Mac. I am the community manager for Dungeon Alchemist, an AI-powered map-making utility for TTRPGs. Allows you to build the environmental maps or battle maps in a snap, as well as roll up your sleeves and build the maps of your dreams. I hope you enjoyed today's stream, and we'll see you next Saturday. Same damn time, same damn channel. That is Saturday here on Twitch at 12 p.m. Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern, and 7 p.m. UTC. Thank you again for watching. Back out. <laughs>